if you've ever fancied doing Blyton, great little track in Lincolnshire. I've been there, really enjoyed it. Good way of doing it is go there on the 19th of November and help support Jacob Smith, who had an unfortunate bike injury and the proceeds of the event uh, are going to him. Doing a track day, much better way of spending your money and giving it to him. Unfortunately, I won't be able to be there on the day. I put this short video together to help you get round the track, to put in a reasonable lap. It might give you a bit of a heads up to have a great day. As I said, fantastic little track. And the circuit itself, we weren't using the, the, this chicane here. We were allowed to use this as, a, as the, the more of an open corner. And it created a few problems and interesting things all in itself. So I'm going to talk about this while we're out there. But essentially you come out of the pit lane area, out onto the track. And because it's a, it isn't really a race circuit as such, it's more like a test facility. Uh, there's no real kind of start-finish line area. But this is considered uh, the last corner is kind of the start area. So it run down into what is essentially turn one. I'm not going to call the names really, well one's Jochen and Lancaster onto the back straight, but I'm going to call that turn one. And because we didn't have the chicane here, there's a, a huge amount of runoff circuit here, which you can in fact use. It's extremely bumpy, uh, which brings its own challenges, is, but that's kind of the area I ran into, and we'll talk about it while we're actually doing a lap. Then it's down the long back straight into a tight right hander called Bishop's, Another short straight into a corner called Bunga Bunga, interesting name, uh, which is like a double apex left. And then through a, a really nice fast uh, right left chicane and in, into Ushers, which you can say is the last corner, tight left with a bit of a bump coming out. And then into the very last corner onto, if you want to call it the start finish straight. So that was the, the layout of the track. So let's go and have a little look now of what it looked like out on the circuit. So. Well, this is the uh, coming into the, the last corner, uh, Ushers. And in front of you here is the paddock area. So you actually come out of the track here to the right and then effectively go down a straight into what, I, <coughs> what I'm calling turn one. So this is the, the lap about to start itself. This particular corner is, is particularly tight and if you run out wide, they, they put like a runoff curb there, which is quite tall and it's not really advised. Most of the curb, the orange sections of the curbs here, most of them you can use and run into. This is one I would say tend not to because it's just too much of a big bump. So let's get into the corner. We're into turn one now. If you were running on the, the the normal circuit, if you will, this is quite a tight left, and then you go through a chicane, and then another tight left onto the straight. But because we were allowed to uh, ne uh, negate the chicane, you could utilise the runoff surface. But as you'll be able to tell by the, the camera and the sound of the bike, how bumpy it was. And then back onto the track. So we essentially were allowed to utilise this section here. The chicane is just over here, but we could run right out into this loop section here. Even with the bumps, this was my preferred line, mainly because you couldn't go that much faster than uh, through this section using the, the smoother track, as it were, on this section because of the bumps. But the, the thing which worked for me was when you came back onto the track, just here and we're coming into I think it's Lancaster which takes you onto the back straight basically what was what was of, of benefit there really was the trajectory of the bike you could get to the sort of as it were the apex of the corner there's an orange section of track here and if you've just come off the circuit through the chicane or you staying on what they call the circuit you get to the apex of the corner and the bike's kind of pointed a little bit kind of off track so the, the corner's quite a long way to go where coming from this amount of runoff, you get at the apex of the corner, you get a much better trajectory. So even though you don't make up that much time going round the corner because of the bump, you get a much better exit onto the straight, which gives you speed up onto the straight 
So let's get up onto that and have a look. This is the final sort of apex. You can run on that if you want to. I particularly didn't uh, very often, but this can. And just at this point is the last of what you would call the proper bumps. There's another bump here. And I was literally waiting, progressively accelerating to that point, over that bump, and then pin it up onto the straight. Now, we were advised by the track day people to sort of utilise the braking point as the edge of this field and the track as a good safe braking place if you come down here on a superbike. But as the day went on and we got more and more confident, it was, it was a sign here. And you couldn't brake at that sign, otherwise you would definitely go gas tracking. But somewhere between the, the start of the field and that sign was the braking area. So I was utilising passing the end of the field and then kind of judging how far I was away from the sign to try my braking. It's a little bit inaccurate and I did suggest them to put some sort of countdown markers or white lines on the side of the track here for future reference. Uh, but either way, it's still a heavy braking approach to what is effectively quite a tight left-hander. Now, I was tending favour in here, picking up the throttle a little bit early here because as it happens, the track turns tight left, but there's another little kind of like blister creating like a slight runoff. And I tended to find reusing that was pretty good. See, this, that's the track itself, but there's this amount of runoff here. And it was really good because it allowed you to carry more speed through what is effectively a tight left at the end of the straight. And using this blister, you basically give you a perfect line into the what is a double left-hander of Bunga Bunga, which is two nips of the same corner. So ideally you want to apex, drift into sort of just about halfway, maybe a bit more, and then back in for the second one. Close throttle past the first apex, keep it closed to the middle of the track, pick the throttle up, and as you're coming back to the second apex, start your acceleration onto a tiny straight, which takes you up to the chicane. This is the start of the run back towards the start-finish area. And they've marked the track out because effectively th this is one of the main runways so it's quite broad the tarmac that you're on so to help identify where the track kind of goes they've used a series of cones and straw bales and the problem with the straw bales and or the cones was right where you needed to get your, your shoulder over and your knee over you had to kind of move out slightly because of the straw bales so from this point onwards you, you had to keep your eye open for the straw bales all very exciting so let's have a watch there's a, a strip of tarmac here, a square of tarmac, and I, I found it, there wasn't much point in going further out to the right than that. So this was run over that and keep the radius going, but use this point to start to gradually pick the bike, the momentum up to get you back into the second apex. Now, I was tending to do a short shift there because as you sort of come out of the left, and then flop the bike right, the engine revs pick up really quick because you're going literally straight onto the side of the tyre and into what is the first of the chicanes. Again, you can run on this orange section here, but the only problem is, is you have to keep your eye open and your shoulder more to the point on this straw bale, so keep your eye out for the straw bales. Off the throttle here, rapid change of direction, pick the throttle up at the second uh, straw bale and you can see how close you get and then drive out onto what is a, essentially a straight down towards the next to last corner. The, the corner's obviously some distance in front of us and there's a link road comes in from the left here and I found this orange section of tarmac was a perfect marker and I was tending to run across that and as you came onto the track coming out from the, from the left, literally where the track kind of ended, get back onto your track as it were, which then gives you the perfect line into the corner. Watch the straw bale and as you come out here to run down to what is effectively the last corner there's, there's a definite dip in the track so don't be too much of a hero kind of roll into the throttle and accelerate progressively and get used to where the bike kind of gets a bit a bump's different than a hump this, this hump in the track tends to kind of unsettle the bike a little bit so you need to keep your eye out for that. A strong break into the last corner. 
don't be suckered into this corner it, even though it's 90 degrees it somehow wants you you feel like you must get in there early which of course tightens it up even more so stay out in what is effectively your drifting lane into the pit and then bring the bike over to the left and then out onto the start finish straight if you want to call it that okay i'll let it run for a lap or two so you can have a true feel of what the bike and the track looks like and the sound listen to the sound because you can really tell how bumpy the track is and that's it's a really fun track great for setting the bike up but the bumps can be catch you out if you're not aware where they are so that's the first thing i would do when i get there a learn the shape and b find out where the bumps are so I'll let it run and see what you think 